What's up, Rupert Faust here from Grounded Permaculture Action Party and today I want to run through a video tutorial on how you can create one meter contours for your property anywhere in Australia using high quality LiDAR data that is freely available to download for anybody. Now there is a few tricks to get, get to getting it working for you um, but we're going to step through that and um, show you how it's done. So the first place you want to go to, first I'll just zoom this down so you can see my screen and I can make this little thing go away. Yeah, there we go. All right, cool. Oh, I didn't do the pin. Wait a minute. Pin it to the top. View, float on top. Make the thing go away. There we go. All right. First thing we want to do is go to this website called elevation.fsdf.org.au. We want to type in our location. You can put in an exact address. I'm just going to type natural bridge to take us to where we have the grounded regenerative living hub. It is thinking and doing its thing. We're going to zoom in natural bridge. Now, if I come just up here a little bit, this is where our property is just here on cave Creek. Now I'm going to order data. If I click order data, draw a box, you can do a circle, a polygon, polygon freehand, whatever you want to do. I'm just going to click, draw for a box and I'm just going to um, zoom over this like this boom that's our property and I'm going to search so now it's going to bring up all of the available uh, data sets for this zone and everything is coming up here we go so we've got all these different results from Queensland Government Geosciences Australia we'll go to the Queensland Government what we're looking for is digital elevation models um, and you can see here it's got 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, all right, what we actually just want is um, the 2014 data. We don't need that one or that one because it's not really on the property. We're going to pick this one and this one, and on the next page, we can pick up these last two. So there's four that will cover the property. They're one meter uh, square tiles. And we're going to select our industry, agriculture. We'll just type in our email address, groundedpermaculture at gmail.com. All right, so that's basically how you access the data. Order for data sets. It's free. doesn't cost any money. It's been submitted, and I'll receive an email very soon. So if I go, I'll open up my email. Boom. That should pop in there in a second. Now the next thing you want to do to open this data is a program, download a program called QGIS. It is free open source software that is um, used for mapping, a lot of mapping. So you can download that to your computer and um, get that set up and installed. If I go to my email, you can see, oh no, that's not what I want. Where is it? Elevation data, here we go, boom. All right, so it's down, going to download the data for me. It's downloading the data. I'll make sure that we've got nothing in there. Yep, the downloads are coming. So that's easy enough. And we've now also gone and downloaded QGIS. All right, we've also got that now set up on our computer. We're going to go to the data. It's all done. Let's have a look. It's unzipping. All right, so now we've just downloaded and opened QJS. We're just going to click on New Empty Project, double click. Now what we want to do is go f um, add these layers in. Now these are um, raster layers, the TIFF files that we've just downloaded. So we want to go into um, raster, uh, sorry, menu, layer, add layer, add raster layer. This program is can be quite complex, but it's not that bad once you know what you've got to do. So we've just downloaded. We're in downloads, Queensland Government, DEM, one meter. All right, we've got our data, four data sets. Let's open them up. And we'll just go add. Cool. So now it's just added those four files. Now what we want to do is convert those raster layers into vector layers, into SH shape files, SHP, which can then be opened by Google Earth. And Google Earth is a free um, software that you can also use on your um, laptop 
or computer, that is very, very handy, very useful tool for planning um, your property. So we are now got our data, we've got to convert it. So we go click menu, we go raster, we go conversion, we go uh, polygonize raster to vector. So we're going to click here, vectorize, we're going to save to a file. Now what we're going to do is I'm just going to quickly create a um, converted folder, create, and then we're going to call it nb1 all right and that's going to be our first one. Oh, what i did actually raster conversion polygonize uh save to temporary file save to file nb1 save what we have to do is run there we go not close all right so we've got our first one then we can just basically work through each one I haven't figured out, every time I've tried to do this, there is tools in here to do it. Conversion, polygonize, there is tools to do batch conversions. Every time I've tried to do that, I just don't get it working. So I just have to do it one by one. NB2, uh, we go run. It does take a little bit longer. We go vector, uh, sorry, raster, conversion, polygonize. We're going to pick our file, save to file, nb3, save, we're going to run, and then we're going to do nb4, file, conversion, polygonize, da -da, save to file, and this should be nb4, save. And then we go run. All right, so that's got our four files now converted. We should be able to just delete these older ones. Okay, I'll delete this one. Remove layer, okay. I'm gonna delete this one, remove layer. Okay, and then I'm gonna remove this one. Now, let's see if I can do this little trick as well. So. What we can do is we've got our four shape files. We can also now convert them, merge our vector layers, input layers. We just have to select our input layers. One, two, three, four. Um, and then we should be able to close that. No, it's saying not selected. But when I click that, okay, it just does it. Hmm. Data management merge. If we pick our save to file, um, what we're going to do is now convert it. So we'll say nb merged, save, and then destination. No, we don't need to worry about that. So now if we do this, we should be able to select all. And then maybe can I run? No, I'm just going to go OK. I don't know, for some reason it's not working. It must be a bug in the system. Normally you should be able to convert that and put it all into one. But we're not gonna let that hold us up. So we've pretty much done what we need to do now in QGIS. So I'm gonna close this down and out of the way. Oh, hang on, there we go. Now I can run it. There we go, it's gonna work. Look at this. It's like hidden the thing behind me. All right, so now we've got our merged one. Let's have a look. Yeah, great, look at that, it's done it. For us, we've now merged it all into one file. Okay, so if I go into my converted thing here, I can see NB merged. Now there's all these sort of uh, project files and uh, SHX and SHP. All of these files need to stay together. Wherever you put them uh, bundled up, even though Google Earth is only gonna open the SHP, all of these are kind of associated data files. So the next thing that we want to do is go to Google Earth, earth.google.com. If you don't already have it, download Google Earth um, and then get that set up on your computer. It can take a little while. I've already got it set up on my computer. Now I'm here sort of at the natural bridge locality area of um, where we are. What I want to do is I've just set up a folder here called new site. When I open the file, 
it's going to put it in temporary places. So new NB merged shapefile, open that up. Now this should just work for us. Um, we're going to import it all. Don't worry about this data thing because we'll be able to, it's very, uh, even though there's lots of data points, it's not actually a big file. Do I want to apply a style? I'm just going to say no. Now, how do I get that off? There we go. That's good. It's just taking a little minute to load it up. Taking a long minute to load it up. You'll find Google Earth can be sometimes very painfully slow doing these things. But it is an excellent excellent free resource um, that anybody can use to do these things. Oh, I've got the wheel of death. There we go. Just need a little, little bump. So it's now loaded it up into um, my temporary places. If I turn this on, it should just bring it up. Going a little bit slow, but here we are. We've got this white square, which is basically four square kilometers. Now I should be able to just move this into my new site. Oh, it's gonna, yes, it did it, fantastic. Great. Now, um, a key thing that you wanna do here is, once you've moved it out of temporary places, and I've got my new site highlighted, if I go File, Save, Save My Place, Save Place As, it's going to save this folder, new site, um, anywhere I want. So I'm just going to go into my downloads here, call it a new site. It's going to save it as a KMZ. Now, this is really important so that next time you open Google Earth, it's going to have everything within that folder there for you. Um, so especially the contours that we're now going to produce, we want to be able to see them next time we open Google Earth. All right, so we've got that there. We know it's going to be opened again. Now, the next thing I want to do, because all I'm looking at right now, if I scroll in, is this big white box. And if I scroll in even further, it's got all these crazy colors and it makes it really hard to see. So if I go right click on the, the layer that I just added in and I go get info, what it's going to do, if I can get that off, why does it do that? Anyway, where are we? Google Earth, get info. Okay, so now we're going to go style color and what we want to do is just go outlined. It's going to change that just to the lines. We want to pick a color that you like, that you think you can work with. I like to go for this orangey yellow kind of color with contours. If I click OK and then I'm going to set my opacity to about 20%. Um, and I could even make it a little bit thinner. See, look at that, it makes a massive difference. Okay. So now that what that means is I can see everything on my site. Whoa, come back here. I can see everything on my site really well, yet I've also got all of these um, contours that are um, I can still see. Now I can change that to anything I want. Um, and if we zoom in on our site here, I might just change that again. Up, turn it up a little bit. Style color. Let's turn it up to one. There we go, one meter thickness. Uh, one Number one is the thickness. It's showing all these contours for the property. Now, you can see this quite accurate. We've already got swales that were built here a long time ago, all dead on contour. And you can then use this for your planning purposes to then start to map out tree lines, to map out swales if you want to do that, to map out potential dam sites, to map out roads. When you've got one, contours like this, you can do a vast amount of planning for your property. So that's essentially it. That's all I wanted to show you today. Um, and I hope you've got some good value out of that video, this video. And um, let me know how you go. Have a go at it. Drop a comment um, below. And um, yeah, good luck mapping out your property and um, on all your regenerative endeavors, um, doing all the good things. All right, speak soon. Peace.